Hey guys, before we go ahead and spoil the two best combos in Ixlon, both cards that the combos rely on, one of them in Planar Chaos, I believe, and the other one in Lorwyn. They have already spiked up in price. It is pretty obvious that a combo piece came out. When you talk about MTG Finance, that is the only only way that you're going to make money and there's no way for you to predict it it's unexpected a card gets printed like vampire hex maids and it makes a card that was bulk now times 10 in price that is the growth that you want to see because now you can sell that card for above what you paid for it a card typically has to double or triple for you to get your money back via buy list. And if you're buying a ton of the cards, you're not gonna be able to out them unless you have a buy list, unless it's on a buy list. So when I hear people talk about, oh, you know, MTG Finance, MTG Finance, you really need a card to double before you get your money back on any standard or modern, and that's being, that's being generous. Typically a card might even triple and you still lose money on it. So when you hear about all these articles telling you all these standard cards are very hot and I mean they're trying to sell you the cards so keep that in mind. I like these two combos I don't want to take anything away from them but they're it's only kind of met. So we have Pyrohemia which is a red version of Pestilence in Planar Chaos. It went from pennies which is absolute bulk to about five dollars overnight because you have more dinosaurs you already had this effect this effect was considered good because the dinosaurs have an effect where you damage them and something good happens but this is the only modern legal version of it that's why out of all the cards this is the one to go up repeatable effect there's a polymorph raptor that doubles every time it's damaged so every time you pay one red you get another, or every time it's in rage, you get another token. And the second time you pay the red, you get two tokens that double again. And it gets pretty crazy, right? It gets pretty crazy. Here are some of the dinosaurs with enrage. Typically, any dinosaur with enrage is going to be very, very good. In modern, is this what you want to do? Do you want to play eight mana polyraptor with no enter the ability effect, a trap, trap, draw Tyrant at five with, I mean, four and five, if that's really what you want to be doing on turn four and five, or something that will untap target permanent. I'm sure there is a way to do an infinite combo in modern with another piece. The answer is no. That is the crazy stuff. That is the crazy thing I learned about MTG Finance was all these geniuses that you hear about that have made a reputation, myself included, we did MTG Finance during the Golden Age, which was modern cards. You could pick any modern card and it would go up in price. Now today, it's a lot harder. And these are the two, these are the only outside of reserve list cards and just old cards in general. They don't have to be on the reserve list, but being on a reserve list certainly, certainly does not hurt them. You have to rely on luck, pure luck. So let's take a look at Respeladont Mentor. It was pennies, now it is $2.89. Is it good? Not really. Is it gonna be C play in EDH? Possibly as a two part combo. But this card was completely useless. And now it is, what is it, times 10 in price. So you can buy list it for more than a dollar probably right now. If you get rid of it right now, you can definitely get a dollar from it. Why? Why did this happen? Well, Famous Paladin got printed. And this reminds me a lot of just how lucky MTG Finance is. Whether or not Falia went up in price is wholly dependent on her not getting reprinted. Did I know that would happen? No. I did not. And in 25th Master Series, could Falia be reprinted? I think she will be. If I dodge that bullet, I'll be okay. I have two gambles here. I like to gamble. And here's my two gambles. 
Noble Hierarch, I own lots of them. People are saying Noble Hierarch would be reprinted, but what if it is not in 25th Masters? That's interesting. Because you're looking at a card that is very, very good. All right, now back to the combo. It is a very simple combo. You pay the two, then you pay the five, and then whenever it doesn't untap during your untap step, whenever you gain life, untap it. White creatures you control have tap it, gain one life, so you can gain pretty much as much life as you want. It's good, but not great. Again, how would anyone know that this Kifkin Cleric that was an uncommon lore win worth probably five cents would have a combo piece to go off. No, no one's going to be able to predict this. I don't care how many paywalls or what podcast you listen to or any of this stuff. There's no way to predict this. And this is the only speculation that makes any sense. And it is totally by random because let's say you predict a card and you predict a card that costs $5. It went to $10. You still lost money. Try to buy list that card for $5. See what happens. If it isn't standard, it's not going to work. Now, if a $5 card goes to $20, maybe if you're very lucky, you can buy list it for $10. i am talking about cash here. Maybe $10, but okay, let's imagine the lost cost of opportunity. And let's imagine that you have to move it, so that takes time and effort. And there was a risk of loss, right? The card could have also gone down to zero. So with all these factors that no one ever talks about, including risk of loss, you're not likely to you're not likely to make money. Even if you picked a one or two card pre-order to really double or triple on price, break even maybe. Yes, you get quote trade value, but most people will just keep it in their binders, they'll sit there forever, rotate out, and you lost all the money. That is the majority of Magic players I know. Because even me, I don't have like a sense of urgency sometimes, although I know, oh, Falier, uh-oh, Falier might be reprinted. Uh-oh, Noble Hierarch. There's no sense of urgency for me to buy list it because I'm like, all right, I'll just gamble. And Magic players are gamblers, but that is not actually a good gamble. If I were smart, I would sell all my Falias. But luckily, I have another utility for them. And I bought her at two, so I'm actually waiting for another reprint so I can rebuy her. I can buy back in. But that's me. So at the end of the day, a lot of interesting things are, quote, happening in MTG Finance. But they're not happening because people are really smart and they're predicting this, they're predicting the market. No, I don't really believe in that anymore. The only people making money from MTG Finance are the people selling you articles for Pico Points. Anyway, that's it, guys. Uh, leave me a comment if you agree or disagree. Maybe you disagree and you think MTG Finance is a big data-driven... I have run algorithms on... I'm not going to tell you what platform because then you... Uh, let me just say, Google has lent me a, a platform and I run my algorithms. I'm supposed to run like paid ads, right? I do millions of dollars in paid ads. But I ran magic algorithms to see if it worked and it's just random. Like you, even if you know a card is good, everyone else knows that card is good. It is far likely that a good card is overhyped than a good card is underhyped. The cards that actually have the ability for you to make money from, actual cash money, not pretend money, are cards like the two cards we just looked at today. When another combo piece comes out and this five cent card at your local game store is $5 overnight, you're not going to lose money from that. But if a $5 card goes to $10, you're not making very much money, if any money, if especially if you own many copies of it, how are you going to get rid of them? How? Within a short time frame, how you, they're not liquid. A large majority of these cards are not liquid because they're in standard modern. Anyway, that is it. Leave me a comment if you agree, uh, disagree. I know a lot of this. Also, also like this is the two lines I have. I have a daytime line, which is like kind of a nice line, and I have a nighttime line that I'm going to use for my drama channel. So in the beginning, my concept is I'm going to put in 
a line depending on do you want if it's going to be a drama video or be more of a financy video. I think this is more of a financy video. So I started with my daytime line and I ended up with my nighttime line. But during the drama videos, I'll just do nighttime line and then daytime line. Anyway, let me know if that makes sense for you guys because I know I have two audiences. One of them likes the drama. And supposedly I have this MTG finance audience, which I I don't know if this is true or if people are just criticizing me. And yeah, I want to go, I'm going back to MTG Finance because that is corely what I'm interested in. And I know Presley made some videos today. I don't know if they're going to go up, but we'll see. Bye.